that helped push all of this. People say, oh, look, Walmart's a snake eating itself. See, no, it's not. What is it? Six different Walmart heirs, all worth 45, 46, last time I checked, billion dollars a piece. And you can say, hey, folks don't have to shop there. Books have been written on how Walmart manipulated markets, engaged in all sorts of underhanded chicanery. And now the American people, even though the population's growing because of the third world influx, the profits are going down. But at a certain point, that's what it's meant to do. It's a consolidation curve. It's meant to end the free market as we know it. And then Walmart moves on to more multinational operations. They made the deals with China. They set it up. They were successful. While the Waltons take down America from their multi-million dollar yachts, they simultaneously pose as the saviors by setting up fake philanthropic foundations and creating a brand that claims to care for American families. They actually couldn't care less. They've donated next to nothing to charity. Comparatively, Bill Gates and Warren Buffett have given approximately 30% of their wealth to charity, and those guys are evil. Now a new report from the globalist machine, the World Bank, projects that 600 million new jobs must be created over the next 10 years, or 5 million a month, just to prevent the situation from getting worse. The majority of the unemployed will be between the ages of 15 to 29 years old. Millennials already make up an average of 40% of the unemployed in the United States. A generation living in poverty during the best years of their lives is a hard way to go. Meanwhile, the homogenized business model of corporatized chains akin to Walmart are gobbling up what once made America great while blazing a corporatic trail towards the death of America in their own greedy globalist lifetimes. John Bound for Infowars.com. This is a protest, and this is a riot. If you can't tell the difference, then you are part of the problem. Infowars.com. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. This is an American president. Just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade, bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. I'm running for president. Everyday Americans need a champion, and I want to be that champion. I'm hitting the road to earn your vote, and I hope you'll join me on this journey. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. 
Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee. And it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend. You will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. A British nurse who had contracted Ebola was released this last January. We were told that she had been cured. She was told she had been cured. Nevertheless, she nearly died this last week after a relapse, and it has completely changed everything that medical science thought they knew about Ebola. The nurse's name is Pauline Cafferkey. She's Scottish. She had contracted this while working in West Africa. The end of last week, her condition was critical. But hospital has said that she is now serious but stable. We're glad to see that she's improving, but her family is very upset. They say doctors, quote, missed a big opportunity to spot that she had fallen ill with Ebola again after it emerged that she'd been sent home by an out-of-hours doctor who saw her earlier that week. Now, The Guardian breaks it down this way. They say what Pauline Cafferkey's Ebola relapse does is it tears up everything doctors thought they knew. They say going all the way back to 1976, Doctors thought that they had a reasonable idea of what these infections were about. They said the disease was grim, but if you beat it, you had a full recovery. Now that is in question. When Pauline Cafferkey was admitted back nine months after recovering fully from Ebola, and remember, she's a nurse, she's been giving medical care to people within that nine-month period. They say she became critically ill. The previous assumptions about the long-term effects of Ebola had to be torn up. And doctors and scientists are saying they are amazed and appalled. Science is never finished, is it? Especially when it's medical science. One of those scientists, Jonathan Ball, who's a professor of molecular virology at Nottingham University, admitted to being surprised. He said there's a lot of unknowns about Ebola, but he said, I don't think anybody would for one minute have expected complications quite as seriously as these appear to be. Now they point out this is what happens. They say that while the bloodstream and the saliva and organs like the liver can test for being free of Ebola, there are immunoprivileged pockets where it can hide out, parts of the body that the immune system does not protect. They found that it lingers in the eye, for example. That was Ian Crozier, an American doctor who had worked in Sierra Leone. He had contracted Ebola. He had been cured in September of last year, but it lingered in his eye. It caused him an inflammatory eye disease, and it turned his eye from blue to green. And on the same day that Cafferkey's uh, condition, the British nurse, was said to be critical, the same journal published a paper on the length of time that the virus lingers in semen. They say the genital tract is another immunoprivileged site. Men can carry the virus in their semen for at least nine months. Remember we were told when this first came out, we said, they said, well, you know, seven weeks. Then we heard from some people seven months. And we thought, well, what is it? Is that a typo? We couldn't get any clarification on that. Now they're saying at least nine months because they've had a verified, well-documented case of sexual transmission in Liberia that resulted in the death in March of a woman from Ebola who had contracted that by sexual transmission. They said there's other places that the virus is thought to lurk in the prostate gland, amniotic fluid, 
the placenta, breast milk, breast milk, and the central nervous system. Of course, that includes the brain, and that's the fear with Cafferkey. They point out that there, were, there was one occasion where they had two monkeys that appeared to have recovered from the virus, but they had a relapse that involved the brain, and they said it was very debilitating to them. It would have been a life-threatening illness, but since it was an animal, they went ahead and put them to sleep because that's their protocol with animals, but that's not what they do with humans. It's not clear exactly what's going to happen with this, but they say they didn't see any changes in the organs that you would associate with Ebola. The spleen, the liver, things like that were all fine. There was no traces of Ebola, but the brain was very heavily involved, as was the eye. But don't worry. They have some very reassuring news. They say she wasn't presenting symptoms that would pose a risk to other people. There you go. Don't worry. It's no problem at all. They now completely understand everything. That's what we've been told all along about Ebola, isn't it? Just like we're told about the failed climate models. Science is never finished. They need to always be learning. We need to be always learning, always informing ourselves. Look at this. CNN reports the Arctic Doomsday Vault has been open to retrieve vital seeds for Syria. We've mentioned this many times to you at InfoWars. Maybe you didn't know there was a Doomsday Seed Vault. But they say humanity has had to cash in on its insurance policy earlier than expected. They say deep in the side of a mountain in the Arctic archipelago is the Global Seed Vault. They say known as the Doomsday Vault, this seed bank operated by Norwegian government and containing a seed of just about every known crop in the world is meant to be humanity's backup event in case there's a catastrophe that devastates crops. But I point out that this wasn't a natural disaster, but a man-made one. The war in Syria, more specifically a Washington, D.C. crisis that was created. Now, what they have done, though, is very troubling. What they're doing is they're moving this research lab that was in Syria. They're moving these seeds out for additional research. They're moving it to another area. It is the research equivalent of eating your seed corn, and that's what we have to be worried about, that this is something that is not going to be lost at this point as they move it from one war-torn area to another that it may spill over into. Now, as we talk about wars and we talk about the United Nations, we now see that the UN, at least one committee there, has admitted that the war on drugs has been a catastrophic failure. That was the report, and maybe that honest assessment isn't going to get released because maybe they didn't know that the leadership were the ones who actually created the war on drugs. Conservatives don't realize that the war on drugs is really a UN agenda, just like Agenda 21. They created the agenda all the way down to the four classifications of schedules 10 years before Richard Nixon declared a war on drugs in 1971. In 1961, the UN created and laid out the plans for the war on drugs. And now Richard Branson has exposed this memo. This was something that was sent out to news organizations. It was embargoed until the UN leadership approved it. And then suddenly, this unreleased statement, they told them, stop the information. Stop the presses. Don't run with this. He says the UN was preparing to declare unequivocally that criminalization is harmful, unnecessary, disproportionate. Branson said the document changing the UN's stance on drug control was supposed to be released at a conference in Malaysia Sunday. But that has now been delayed. And so he says, let us hope that the UNODC, a global organization that's part of the UN, is supposed to be doing what's right for the people of the world, does not do a remarkable about face at the last possible moment and bow to pressure by not going ahead with this important move. The war on drugs has done too much damage to too many people already. Well, that's precisely what it was designed to do. And of course, it wasn't that long ago that we had the UN getting involved telling individual states that had decriminalized marijuana in the United States, like Colorado, Oregon, Washington, and others, telling them that uh, that, that law was going to be null and void because the UN said so. That's the kind of control that they're exercising. But of course, there's other forms of softer tyranny that may turn out to be just as hard in the long run. Remember when Hillary Clinton was first lady? She tried to take over health care. That later became Obamacare. Now we got Michelle Obama deciding that she's going to control what we eat. But this is starting to backfire. We've had articles like this one from the Activist Post talking about how horrible the food in Lubbock, Texas is. This is a person who's a professional nutritionist. And they said, this is absolutely absurd. There's too many starches. There's highly processed, chemicalized, probable GM starches. 
There's a difficult, it's going to impact the student's ability to concentrate. It's going to increase any ADD or ADHD tendencies. And now we have a school in Montana that has basically